Hello everyone, Trophy100, welcome back to my YouTube channel. Today I'm doing a special video to prepare for the Vancouver International Wine Festival and the International Tastings. So the International Tastings are the heart of the festival. These are the tastings where you get to try different wines or different wineries. There's about 140 some odd wineries and each of them serve between four to five wines. So tons of stuff to um, drink and sample and so i just want to give you some tips on how to navigate the room i did a previous video on um, wine festivals in general but i'm going to focus particularly to my viewers in vancouver who will go to the festival so a couple of general points before we get into the actual wines one is that the strategy with any wine festival you have to look at the theme so the theme of this year is uh, wines of south america so you should probably focus on those wines particularly because a lot of those wines uh, will be kind of one-time buys, um, your only chance to drink at them. And so even if you like Italian or American wines, drink those, but also try to drink those wines from South America because that's the focus of uh, this year's tasting. The second thing is that because it's a wine tasting and you want to try different wines, I would focus on the high-end labels. You're paying for this festival, so you should get your money's worth and you want to try the top-end stuff, which is, you know, expensive. So it's a really nice um, way to actually try really expensive wines without buying them all. So having said that, um, it is kind of rude to just go up to every um, table and just ask for their biggest wine or the best wine. It's kind of like uh, wine shopping or wine trick-or-treating. You just go from table to table. I think most uh, agents and producers hate that because um, you're not really focusing on the winery at all. So with my recommendations, I'm actually choosing wineries or tables or booths where I think the whole gambit of the wines are very good and so that you don't have to just go there and just taste one wine. I think that is quite impolite. Um, just say, I just want your top wine and then move to the next table. A lot of them, the winemaker will be there or the representative from the winery will be there. So they take pride in this. And all you're doing is, as a consumer, I'm just concentrating on points and I'm just concentrating on the most expensive wine. So that's a little bit impolite. And that's why I've chosen a lot of um, recommendations where it's not just one wine, but the whole table, I think it's been very As you'll good. see a wine in front of me, I always try and do promos for my other videos. This is an upcoming video I'm doing on a wine winery called uh, Domaine de Villon. This is Alain Villon's winery in uh, Côte Chalonnais. It's from the Rouli region. Uh, it's a premier crew, white wine, spectacular wine. I'll kind of give you a, a sneak peek of that, but um, this is not that expensive wine, but very exclusive. And he's the guy that manages DRC, so it couldn't be that bad. So anyways, let's get back to uh, this video. The other thing I want to talk about is um, spitting because I think there's a growing trend for people not to spit wine. I must admit I do do that, but I'll try to do it less this year because if you think about it, these people are all uh, producers and it's their craft and you're spitting it out. You should just uh, limit the amount of wines you have instead of tasting 80 wines and spitting them all out. Why don't we just taste 20 and drink them? And I think that's more and more a trend. But if you have to spit, I'm not going to judge against people that want to spit because I, I do. But I'm just saying in general, I think the trend is now that people will spit less because again, we're not talking about, we're talking about wine appreciation and wine tasting, not wine spitting. And we're not experts. I think there is some rationale for people in the industry that have to go through a lot of wines, but we're just consumers. So if you're enjoying the wine, why spit it out? But if you're going to spit, you usually have a bucket in front of you. And, you know, the tendency is basically to um, kind of just spit into it. Um, there's two problems with that. One, it's kind of a long way. It's kind of really gross to kind of just spit. And then secondly, what happens if the spit bowl gets kind of full, you actually spit it and it kind of bounces back in your face. That's not too great. So what I generally do is I actually pick up the, spit, the thing and actually spit into it. Um, and again, that is a little bit more polite, I think, than just, just dribbling your spit from like five feet away. So, um, so that's what I do. And the other problem is when sometimes when you bend into the spit bowl, it kind of comes back at you. So 
Um, the second thing is what happens if the spit bowl is kind of too full and you can't really get, uh, lift it up or you're worried about dropping it, then what I would do is also just spit back into your own glass and then pour the glass back in. There's lots of great wineries, but I'll just kind of highlight it again. There's not, we can't drink all of them. So I'll highlight the ones that I think are really, you know, you should might want to visit. The first one is um, from Argentina. The table is Bodega Amalaya and Bodega Cologne. So they have nice Malbacs. I love Malbacs. It's a good um, kind of selection of wines. Um, the one that I would focus on is their high-end, the Cologne Authentico Malbec. And so that's at $63.99. Um, but the whole table, they've also got their estate uh, Malbec, which is $46.99. And then they have the Amalaya Malbec, which is a little bit price um, more value wise. So I think that's a good table to start with because it's Ar it's Argentina. It's um, You get di different levels of Malbec. They also have a rosé and then a Riesling on that table. So I really like that table. The next winery I'm gonna focus on is Bodega Garzon from Uruguay. So again, South American producer. I think they have a dinner that's available too. And um, this is a very interesting one because they've got a very interesting selection of wine. The one I would focus on is their high level, it's called the Belasto. It's $115 a bottle, um, 2018 vintage. But the key with this is it's the it's a blend, but it's a blend with the grape type Tanit. And Tanit is very indigenous for Uruguay. It is also grown in some places in uh, France, but it's kind of a, not a um, usual grape. So it's kind of a chance to try this wine. So Tanit is um, very high in tannins. It's got very robust flavors, red and black fruit, raspberry, plum, blackberry, some spicy and smoky notes. But, you know, in that line of Malbec flavors, but very, very high tannins. They've got um, also a, a Reserva Tannet, um, which is at $25.99, and then they have a Petit Verdot. So they've got some really interesting wines, and I would really encourage you to taste those. They have an on-site liquor store. So many of these wines are available for purchase. I would recommend if you do that, go, and if you like a wine, go and purchase it first and then come back to tasting. There's in and out privileges. A lot of times people wait till the end and the, all, the, all the wines they love, they're all gone already. You can either pick up later on that night, but if you have a lot of the wine, like you buy a case of wine, you can actually deliver, they can actually pick it up at your uh, most uh, favored or uh, uh, liquor store, the location that's nearest to you. Next wine we're gonna go to is again, another uh, South American wine from Bodega Trevento, and again, it's uh, for Argentina. And again, I like Malbec, so I like to try this, but the one that's really interesting in this one is they have a white Malbec. I think I did focus on that in one of my updates uh, a couple of months ago, but I've never tried white Malbec. It's not expensive, it's only like $15.99, but I'd love to try it. They also have a Reserva Malbec, a private reserve, and then their Golden Reserve, and then they have their high-end Malbec, which is called Iolo. Um, so again, I like the whole table. You can taste all the wines and there's interesting stuff there. Next winery I'm going to focus on is Carpinetto. And part of this is, I think it's a great producer. It's from Italy, from the Tuscany region. Um, and the wine that I would focus on is their Grand Selezioni, 2016, which is a great vintage for Italy, $69.99. A bottle i think it's 95 point wine spectator so i would go and take a look at that but again they've got other great wines at their table they've got a um, chianti classical reserva they've got a uh, vina nobili the monte Pigiano, and they even got a cabernet sauvignon so uh, carbonato is a great producer of wine so i would go there another really exciting um, italian producer that's uh, serving wines is casa de mirafiori from Barolo. And of course, if you've looked at my site, I'm really interested in Barolo these days. So I'm really interested in this um, table because they have some um, single vintage or single vineyard um, Barolos that I'm really interested in that are very high end. They've got one called Pia Gallo um, at $195. Then they have uh, Nazarito at $230. They have a regular Barolo and then they have entry-level Langhi wines and Barbara d'Alba. So 
the whole gambit of those wines. I think these are very highly rated wines. Again, I'm not exactly sure. I haven't done my total research on it, but I'm not sure exactly what villages they are, but that's part of the fun to discover that. Uh, the next wine is Catina Zapata. And I'm very careful with it because I know that people, um, uh, viewers in my previous video picked up that I kept on calling Catina Cantina. It's not Cantina, it's Catina Zapata. And so that's again from Argentina. Um, they've got one of my favorite wines and I've done a review, maybe I'll put it at the end of this video, is their Argentino wine. And that is really top and top shelf uh, Malbec. It's a 2020 vintage, $144. But um, if you wanna try Malbec and really high-end Malbec, um, ethereal Malbec, um, go and try that wine. Argentino is, to me, one of the best uh, Malbecs I've tasted. But again, there's gonna be some exciting um, Malbecs in this room, so go and taste that. Um, for that table, they've got other stuff that's really interesting. They've got High Mountain Chardonnay, they've got High Mountain Cabernet Sauvignon, and I. it's always fun to taste high altitude wines. I think they do get a little bit more ethereal, but it, the difficulty is kind of controlling the ripeness on high uh, mountain uh, fruit. Um, they've got their Alta Malbec uh, also, so um, it's kind of a very interesting table. And that um, Alta Malbec is not inexpensive either, $64.99. So it's a great opportunity. You're trying all these wines that are under the, over $100 wines. Um, you're getting a little two ounce taste, but it, maybe if you're nice and you show some interest, they'll give you a little bit more. And again, if you go back to my other video, one of my tips was, you know, go and taste um, the sample of the wines. And at the end, just go back to the one that you like very much. Just tell them how much you enjoyed the wine. Say, oh, do you mind if I have a little more taste of that? I think they, they really appreciate that, that you've actually put in the time um, to say that and um, just end your night with one of your favorite wines. But these are all really great opportunities to taste uh, very, very good wines. So let's go to the next one that I'm, I'm going to suggest. And again, um, these are just things that is based on also your personal preferences. There's certain things that I'm interested in at this time. Again, I'm going to focus on South American wines. I'm going to focus on wines, uh, Barolo wines, uh, because I'm interested in that area but if you're interested in a certain area go and focus i think that's better than tasting everything and just kind of doing a grab bag um, have a little bit of a plan uh, so the next one is uh, felsina and they are also from the chianti classical region in uh, tuscany they have a what they call an igt wine which is called pantaloro um, that's at 109 dollars a bottle and so this wine I think it's made 100% with Sangiovese, but when it was first established, at that time, the Chianti classical rules didn't allow for 100% um, Sangiovese grapes. They, you had to use only like 70% and you had to use other grape types. So sub subsequently, they had to call themselves a IGT wine, but they never changed it back. The rules now allow for um, Candy classicals to use 100%, but they thought, well, I don't need you anyways. I don't need the label, so I'm going to keep it. So that's kind of an interesting wine. They also have a Rancia Clanti Candy Classical Reserva, also a over $100 wine. They have a um, another Beradegan uh, Candy Classical Reserva at $64. And then they have a Chianti, just a regular Candy Classical. So again, it's a really interesting table because you can drink from Chianti Classico to Chianti Classico Reserva to Grand Selezioni. And this is, has to do with aging process. And you can see that variation. I think that's really interesting. And then you finish off with a Vinsanto, a, nine, a 2011 Vinsanto. Um, try, I think it's a, also a very highly rated wine by Wine Spectator. But um, try that wine because that's a sweet wine and it's a great example of Vinsanto. Uh, next. Winery is Giovanni Rosso, again from the Piedmont region. I'm interested in it because of the Barolo wines and the wine that I have um, is, that I've got pegged to drink is the uh, La Serra. Um, that is, um, again, from one of the villages in Barolo, um, $94.99, but they also have um, uh, wines from other villages, from Saralunga. They have a basic Langhi Nebbiolo grape wine, um, and then they have Barbara d'Alba. So 
again, you can drink through the uh, variations. You drink from Barbera d'Alba, which is um, very simple, uh, everyday wines, not a lot of structure, not a lot of tannins, to a Nebbiolo Langhi, which is declassified, maybe um, doesn't have the aging. Um, then you go to specific um, villages, they go to Seralanga and then La Serra um, for um, differences in that wine in the Barolo type. So I think it's a really interesting table to go to. Next one is uh, Michel Charlo, another Piedmont producer. Again, I'm interested in Piedmont and that's where I'm going to um, focus my attention in terms of my drinking. Um, their most interesting wine or the one that I'm most interested in trying is their Barolo Tontornano. But they also have other things. They have um, Gavi wine. So Gavi is another region that produces wines um, in Piedmont. And so that I'd be interested in that and also Barbera d'Asti. So it just gives you a variation. Sometimes um, in these kind of tastings where um, you're just having a little taste, the Barberas um, might actually taste better than the Barolos because they're um, ready to drink um, more right away. I want to go to a um, champagne and the one that I look is very interesting is called Nicholas Foulat. Um, I think they're the largest producer or the largest uh, seller of champagnes inside France but in terms of worldwide I think they're number three or number four um, but they're they've got a really top shelf um, champagne that they're serving their Palme d'Or um, Brut at $2,209 and 99 cents a bottle. It's 2008, so it's got lots of aging. I think they age it for 10 years before they actually um, sell it in the retail market. Um, they also have you know, other great champagnes, Rosé, Blanc de Blanc, um, uh, in addition to that, that bottle. And so kind of, I don't have the floor plan at this point, but that would be my plan. Probably go to Nicolas Huet first and then drink the rest. I don't have a lot of white wines on this list. Um, that's I didn't see a lot that interested me. And again, it's about focused. I'm more interested in like Burgundy. I didn't see a lot of Burgundy producers. I didn't see um, a lot from Chambon Musigny. But again, that's, the own, that's your own taste preference. Go to your taste preference and kind of once you get there, um, try to um, focus on those. Like let's say if you're interested in BC wines, then drink BC wines. If you're interested in Chardonnays, then look out for the Chardonnays. Um, so if you can get the book beforehand, I'm not sure if they're gonna put it on the website beforehand, that's great. If not, when you get there, just have a quick look. Um, you're there for three hours, so you've got lots of time to drink. Don't rush. Maybe take, just have a seat, uh, take the booklet, um, Take 30 minutes to try to plan out the wines that you want to do and then go in and taste. There's no rush here and I think people kind of tend to rush. I see people lining up at 6.30 to get in and they're rushing through it. It's not, uh, it's not trick or treat. It's not about how many wines you actually drink. It's about the quality of the experience and try to make the Interesting most of it. Interesting winery. I don't drink a lot of Napa but this is a interesting because I've never heard of it. It's called Piju Winery from Napa Valley. So I will probably go and take a look at that just because I haven't had it before. So they've got, it sounds like some pretty high-end wines. Um, they've got a, a legacy collection Cabernet Sauvignon, which is $89.99. They, they have a Merlot, they have a Cabernet Franc, and they have Sauvignon Blanc. So um, very interesting. And again, I would go probably check that winery's table just because I've never heard of them. Another favorite, Penfolds. I love Penfolds wines from Australia. I know this goes against my rule uh, about you know discovering, but I love Penfolds. And um, they've got a great selection at their table. They've got their Chardonnay, the Bin 311. They've got a Pinot Noir. I've never had that. So Bin 23, I might try that. It's $60 a bottle. They have their US um, Shira, uh, Cap Shiraz blend, uh, Bin 600. I'm not sure if I did a review of that wine, um, but they also have their um, better wines or their flagship wines, um, Bin 407, which is Cabernet, and then uh, Bin 389, which is the Cabernet Shiraz. And so these are all very, very high-end wines. Um, if you're a beginner, I would definitely check out this table because it's gonna be, give you a great um, introduction to high-end or mid-level 
um, Australian Shiraz wines. And then we'll end off with uh, Robert Mondavi. Again, um, great iconic producer, but what I'm really interested in is in, in their Tokolon, which is a great bottle, which I drink. Um, I've done a video, video on it. It's $229.99 a bottle. So again, if you're a beginner, that's a great wine to try. But they also have other great wines at their table. They have a Sauvignon Blanc, they have a Chardonnay, they have a Cabernet Sauvignon, and then they have the Oakville um, Cabernet Sauvignon. So these are all tables that I really um, like. Uh, again, my suggestion is to look through the catalog. When you get there, if you can get it online uh, beforehand, that's great. If not, when you get to the festival, just take a little time, uh, 15, 20 minutes, just to look at the tasting booklet, plan out your strategy, what you want to drink, have that in mind, what you want to do um, at the festival, and then focus on that. And um, for me, I'm, as you can see with my list, I'm mostly drinking uh, South uh, American wines. I'm drinking Barolo wines because I'm interested in Barolo and a couple of wines that I just haven't heard of or I think are interesting. That should be well uh, enough for me to consume my night. Um, and that kind of gives some structure to it. So I will, you know, at least have some something that I come from it. Instead of going to 15 different wineries from 15 different countries, drinking 15 different grape varietals, it just becomes just a night where, um, you know, you don't learn anything. That's fine. If you just want to have a good time or you want to um, have a great date night, that's fine. I'm not, um, you know, disrespecting anyone who's want to do that. But I think from if, a learning perspective, um, there are things that you can take away from the wine festival. Hope you've enjoyed this video. Until next time, happy drinking.